Okay, today on uh, 3D Thursdays, we're going to be playing with Blender 3D as usual. And we're going to be looking at something that uh, I'm pretty simple, but I'm pretty excited about. It's something that uh, years ago, before I used Blender, uh, there was something that I used to do, a little animation that I used to create in uh, 3D Studio Max. Here's an example of it um, that I made uh, back in 2005. It's actually from a video I made for my wedding. And as you can see, uh, there's boxes, cubes, falling from the sky with an image across all of them, and they're all falling at different rates. Simple enough, and it was one of the very few things I could not figure out how to do in Blender. It was just a very simple texture uh, issue that I was having. I knew it could be done, I just couldn't figure out how. Finally, the other day, I was watching a video on a completely different subject, and something that the, the guy making the video did made me realize, ah, that is one way that I can do that. So I'm very excited about this. And let me show you originally what my issue was. So let's say I had a cube, like my default cube here. I'm gonna go into uh, front view here. And let's just say I cloned that a few times. I'm gonna grab it, move it. On the x-axis. I'm not going to get them perfect in this case. I'm just going to do this uh, quickly. I'll just shift D to clone that. Oops. Shift D. I keep clicking the wrong button. Let's see. I'll move that there. Shift D and I'll clone them up. Shift D, I'll clone them up. And shift D clone up. So let's say this is our stack of cubes. Obviously, I can make it straighter, but we're going to get into that in a minute. And I wanted to add an image that spread across all of them. Well, that, that was a little difficult to do because I would do, you could add individual textures and materials, and I can add an image. So let me grab an image here, open an image. I'll go to my pictures, grab an image right there. So there's an image, and if I uh, Move my camera to the front view here and line it up so I can see what's going on. And move my lighting source so that there's some light in the scene. Move it around the front here and we'll hit F12. You can see up in the top left, cube. I obviously did something wrong here. Let's see. Got the texture, got the material, texture. And let's change this from flat to cubed in this case. There we go. So I added a material to all of our cubes here, but they're not lined up. I don't want the same image on each cube. I want the same image to spread across all the cubes. So I could try, I tried doing things like changing the, the coordinates here. Like I'll make that two, and I'll make that a two, and I'll make the Z a two. And then I'd hit F12, and it'd be like, oh, no, 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 I went the wrong way. And then you get the idea. And I thought I got close a few times. Like, I could add a plane in here, rotate it on the X 90 degrees. Let's go in wireframe mode so we can see what's going on. And I could try to line it up like this. And then back, going back to our original material, our original texture, I can change this to object, and I can change our object to our plane, like so. And now if I hit F12, well, there we go. We have the image across all the planes. Uh, the X, Y are still a little messed up from when I changed them, but if I change those back to being one, and we render it out again, you'll see the image nicely goes across all uh, the cubes, and I can make that plain and visible so you don't see it, but there is one issue. Um, to get the effect that I wanted, such as the falling cubes, you can see I can select like these three cube cubes here, grab them, move them up on the z-axis. If I hit F12 now, you'll notice that the image does not move with the cubes. It's almost like projecting it on a, as a projector. So as the cubes move, the image doesn't move along with it, and that was a problem because that's not the effect I wanted. Then I had this issue not only with the dropping boxes, but I would want to have like a wall of box like this, and I want to knock them over, you know, using the physics engine or whatever. And I just couldn't figure out how to get 
an image across all the cubes. I've asked this in the past. I had one guy on YouTube. Uh, I asked him, and he came up with a solution, uh, but it was very, very tedious and would take forever. And I'm just like, why can't I just click and say expand image across all these uh, objects? Well, as I said, I did finally find a way years later on how to do it. Uh, some of you may be watching going, well, duh, there's another way to do it other than what I'm about to show you, and it may have just not crossed my mind, but for the life of me, I could not figure it out till now. So let me start with a default scene here. Remove that side panel by hitting T. I'm going to delete the default cube and then add in a plane. Scale that up a bit. And I'm even going to add a material to that. I'm just going to make it uh, shadeless and make it 100% white. And I'm actually also going to add a mirror object or a mirror material to it, put it up about halfway there. That's just to give us a little reflective ground there, but with a white expanding background if I also make the uh, horizon here white. So if I hit F12, everything's just going to look white, which is fine. That's our backdrop. <clears throat> I'm going to now add in a cube. I'm going to scale it to half the size, so S.5. And let me go into front view here. 5 to get out of perspective mode, and Z to go into wireframe mode. I'm going to hit uh, G, Z, dot 5. We'll move that up half of a, a blender unit, since we made it half the size and the original cube was one blender size. It moves it up so it lines up nicely on that plane. Not that it's 100% uh, necessary on this. We could always line it up later, but let's also move it over on the x-axis just a little bit like so. Now I'm going to add an array to it. So with the cube selected, go to the array panel with the little uh, wrench right there, add modifier array. And I said array panel, but I meant modifier panel. And here we can see we have a count of two. Let's turn this up a bit. Seven looks pretty good. We'll apply that, then we'll add another array. And we're going to change it from going on the x-axis, so change that to zero, and change the y-axis to one. And then we'll change the count up here, just like that, just so it's uh, approximately the, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for, aspect and ratio of your original image. This is probably going to be a little bit wider than my original image, but not a huge deal. At this point, you know, if I hit F12, you'll see, uh, well, once again, the light source is out of the way, but you can see the cubes there and the reflection down there. You can play with that, make it look a little bit nicer, but we're just going to get the basics done for this tutorial. Move the light source. See it a little bit better there. Okay. Let's also move the camera view a little bit better. Okay. So we have our cubes. Really, they're all one object at this point. So we can easily add a texture across them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split our view here. I'm going to change this to uh, uh, UV image editor. Currently, it has our last render in there. I mean, press X to get rid of that. And with our cubes selected, our cubes object, I'm going to hit tab to go into edit mode. I'm going to hit A, oh, almost forgot to apply. So hit tab to get out of edit mode, apply the array. So there's no more modifiers, and we still have one full object here. Hit tab, make sure everything's selected, and we'll hit U. And actually, let's go to front view here. Now hit U and do uh, project from view bounds and there you go you can see that, that takes all those cubes from a flat on front view and um, puts them right here to the bounds of our image and let's add in our image here open and choose our picture and there we go now if I hit F12 ah one more thing tab to get out of edit mode and go to materials with the cube selected Add a material, add a texture, choose image or movie, choose that same image. At this point, if we hit F12, you'll see that it's not right. It's showing that image on top and the rest is stretched. That's because we have generated from coordinates and, uh, and um, we got the projection flat. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to change generated to UV 
And at this point, if we hit F12, you can see our image is nicely spread across all our cubes. We still have the issue of the cubes all being one object, so we can't move them individually. Simple fix for that, and this is what I saw in that uh, tutorial, is we hit Tab, uh, and so we're in edit mode on our cube object. P, which allows you to separate, which I knew that, but I did not realize there was a loose parts option. And so that will take anything that's not directly connected by vertices and put them into their own object. So now, if we hit tab to go event mode, you can see each one of these cubes is its own object. We hit P, not P, if we hit F12 to render, you can see that they still have the image going across all of them. And if I was to select a group of them right here and move them up on the z-axis and hit F12, you'll see that the image follows them rather than staying where they were with the other technique. So at this point, it's just a matter of animating it out either manually or using the physics engine to make the cubes move. But we have the image across all the cubes. Um, you do have it stretched on the edges here. That's another issue. That's not what I'm concerned about. I'm concerned about just getting the nice image on the front of them all. And it should look pretty good, but probably reversed on the back side. So that is it for this tutorial. And um, also, we'll just do this for fun too. If you want to make sure the image is saved into the project, be sure to click this little uh, icon here which packages the image into the blend file. At this point you can save it, send the blend file to somebody and the image will be stored in the blend file rather than a separate file that you would also have to send the person. Thank you for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There's a link in the description. And as always, have a great day.